Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryder, and this is a beginner's guide to Torbjorn. Um, this video is going to go over the basic abilities and playstyle of Torbjorn, and uh, you know, kind of explain how he works as a hero, so you can jump into quick play and competitive, and kind of understand the nuances of how he works, and you're not going in blind. Um, keep in mind, in order to really master some of the heroes in Overwatch, it's going to require a lot of practice. Um, so you know, don't get frustrated if you get rolled at first. This is just going to be a, a general overview of how the hero actually functions. Um, I'll go over some uh, some different uh, tips, tricks, strengths, weaknesses, stuff like that. Um, and this, like I, like I said, just a way to get you started. Uh, if you like the video, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, check the description down below where my Twitch link is, where you can uh, find my Twitch channel where I stream pretty regularly on there. But without further ado, let's jump into Torbjorn. The Torbjorn is a DPS hero, and he has seen so many reworks in his time, it's absurd. Um, so I'm going to go over, uh, you know, he hasn't changed much from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, luckily. So, you know, if you played him in Overwatch 1, there's not a huge change in how he functions. And I'm going to go over that right now. So he has his Rivet Gun, which is his primary weapon. There's a primary and a secondary fire. His primary is a slow-firing single shot lava blast that can do quite a bit of damage if you land it however it can be a little tricky you know the, the circle of shot is not very large but i mean you if you headshot some of the lower health heroes you can one to two shot them if you're smart enough with it he can do a lot of damage very very quickly um it's it's pretty nasty the amount of damage Torbjorn has if he finds himself being pressured he does have his secondary fire which launches a molten slag in the face of an enemy that has a little bit shorter range but wider spread and it does a little bit more damage but it allows him to um, deal damage in a you know a situation where he's being pressured by an enemy hero he can do his secondary fire to still keep pressure up while he's being uh, attacked basically um he also has his forge hammer this does do damage I don't use it's just it, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage but it does do some don't don't do it, okay, just, don't do it. the hammer does have an uh, 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 ability and a use but uh, I'll go over that in a second um he also has the ability of molten core uh this ability or not molten core I apologize overload is it. what this does is it gives him extra health improved attack speed movement speed and his damage goes up as well and he gets a little bit of armor um so this basically is a da basically a damage cooldown um it's a good way to if you're getting focused by an enemy target somebody starts to dive on you you can pop overload and uh kind of go full like you know psycho mode and it'll allow you to fend off some attacks on some damage has a 10 second cooldown so, you know, use it. Uh, I use it either offensively to push a point with my team or use it defensively if you're being pressured and pushed out of position or anything like that. Good way to kind of save yourself uh, if you're put in a sticky situation. Uh, and then, of course, his main gimmick is his turret. This turret here, you throw it out, has a five second cooldown, and this thing tracks any enemy in the vicinity while it is up and just keeps constant rate of fire on anything in its range this thing is an absolute fucking nuisance to your enemy team if left unchecked does it has its own health pool um so you know they can kill it but it's not really that big of a deal if it gets killed as long as you're just smart about where you place it uh if they start to target it um and it, it takes a little bit of damage you can use that hammer to go up and if you hit your turret you can heal your turret and repair it um to get it back to full health so that's kind of what that hammer's for don't use it to attack use it to repair your turret if need be but as you can see the entire time i've been talking it has been doing a constant rate of fire on every single enemy that it sees in range and the range and is pretty good um, it can shoot a Pharah out of the sky. It can shoot an Echo out of the sky. Um, it, it, it can shoot pretty wide distances. It, it is a very, very useful tool. Always have your turret up, okay? Um, even if it's just like in a corner somewhere, it just adds extra damage and there's no reason not to throw it out. Um, you do have the uh, uh, other ability to destroy your turret. If you do so, it puts your turret on a 10 second cooldown um so you know you don't want to do that 
really, in my opinion, ever. Um, if your turret gets destroyed by the enemy, um, that cooldown is a little bit less. Um, so, you know, it's always better to, completely honest, to let them just destroy the turret than destroy it yourself, unless you just really want to replace it somewhere else you think it's going to happen. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, all in all, I would just, wait, I wouldn't destroy it myself. Because 10 seconds without your turret, it's a long time without that damage. Um, and that, of course, is ultimate, which is Molten Core. This allows him to do liquid hot magma from the gun and basically anybody caught in this magma will take increasing ticking damage that will just destroy them um as i'll show here so the and this stays on the ground for a good hot minute anything no caught in the molten core people. here will be just destroyed as you can see it doesn't take much to kill the target um, this is a great offensive and defensive ability. Um, offensive, if you're pushing a point um, and you want to just have area denial throughout the entire point to make your enemy team's life a living hell, uh, Molten Core all over a point or all over a payload is just disgusting. Um, defensively, it's also a good area denial tool. Um, if, uh, you know, there's only one entrance to the point let's say you're doing uh, oh gosh well let me think of one dorado and uh you're at that first but you're on first point you're about to go over that arcway and uh you know they're pushing in and they're trying to push the payload you can literally drop molten core right in the middle of the arcway and they they can't get to the point without taking non-stop ticking damage and probably dying so it will slow the enemy team down uh, molten core is very strong but it is very niche yet be smart about when you use it you don't want to just throw it out in the middle of nowhere you want to think about where you are placing your molten core before you launch it otherwise it's just a waste torbjorn can absolutely carry uh your team if he is good enough um but he can also be a hindrance if you don't know when to swap and i'm going to go over some of the strengths and weaknesses to torbjorn um strength wise very strong against Farah and any any flight, to be completely honest with his turret. If uh, the turret's not being focused, he'll shoot Farah and Echo right out of the sky. Um, very strong against pretty much any... Uh, a Genji is also uh, challenged quite a bit by Torbjorn just because it tracks him no matter where he's jumping, dashing, or anything. It's going to track him. Um, it does non-stop damage to everyone. So if your enemy team's not running a shield... Uh, Torbjorn is almost a guaranteed benefit because of the constant pressure it's going to put on the enemy team when they don't have a shield to protect them from it. If the turret is not being challenged, um, then you're going to just clean up. Um, and while I'm on the subject of the turret, turret placement is key. Don't just throw it in the middle of the team while you're running in. It doesn't have a large health pool. It will get deleted pretty quick if you allow them to do it. Be smart on where you throw it. Throw it somewhere that's out of the enemy's line of view, but has a line of sight to the enemy to shoot at people. This will do two things. It will make people take constant damage from an area that they're unaware of where it's coming from, and it will force your enemy to move out of position to go deal with that turret because they can't leave it unchecked. It's basically like a teammate that's not actually a teammate. Um, you know, this is something that's that's in playing Torbjorn is turret placement. If you throw your turret in a stupid location and it just gets burnt down every time you do it, you are effectively wasting a large portion of damage that you are capable of. Um, that being said, if you are noticing that every time you throw your turret down, the enemy team is being very smart and they're burning it instantly, swap. Okay? Don't waste your time because Torbjorn, whereas can pump a lot of damage with his primary fire. He is not built as a Soldier 76. He can do damage, and he is very deadly from a distance and if you land your shots. However, the turret is the large portion of his damage, so if that turret is being burnt down consistently over and over again, um, it, it, you're not going to get a lot of value out of Torbjorn. That being said, though, strengths that he has, anything... Um, or sorry, weaknesses that he has overall that you need to watch out for. Anything that can attack from a distance that can hit it from range. The Widowmaker, Hanzo, McCree, 
soldier. Um, honestly, even though I said they were weak to it, Farah and Echo, well, no, more Farah than Echo, um, are also can be deadly to Torbjorn's turret and Torbjorn himself because they can do damage to the turret without getting close enough for it to shoot at them. Widowmaker's range and her sniper scope and Hanzo's range with his arrow and soldier's rockets, all of those things can completely destroy turrets um, from a distance without actually taking any damage from it. So keep that in mind. Don't, you know, go and uh, stubbornly stick to Torbjorn when your turret's getting focused consistently and destroyed over and over and over again. At that point, you just you may as well be throwing, in my opinion. You know, hot take. Um, uh, tips and tricks... You know, it, it, it's kind of a no-brainer. I already kind of went over in terms of, like, turret placement. Um, but, you know, that is the guide to Torbjorn, guys. If you guys like the video, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any further questions. Let me know if this video helped you out at all. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the stream. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.